we make a 2D RPG here um, and we have the story so far here as well. So if you haven't seen that yet, that is the perfect thing to watch first. So you know exactly what the game's about. We've only got one video so far in the story so far series, but there's one very likely to be made at some point later in this month because we've got quite a lot of extra story that's happened since this video quite a bit so we're definitely due for a new video and i'll be really excited to to do that okay so we came on from where we left off i have done a little bit more since um uh, thursday's stream i've added a little bit more dialogue which i said i would do um because one of the goals this week is to actually move on to making the scene and putting it together. I'd really like to do that this week. Um, probably just spend maybe the start of this week finishing the dialogue. But it's also very important to spend time crafting the, the scene, like making sure the dialogue's great. We don't want to do a rush job and have um, a crappy, a crappy dialogue and characters that, you know, have a that aren't making any sense we need to make sure we're happy with it so no harm in spending a bit of extra time making sure it's great um framework to use to cast moral philosophies in gameplay time and have effects in terms of game effects damage modifications yeah exactly and i think the framework as a tool are like the keywords with things like alignment tropes and anything like that and um it always helps to have something to go off with a character because not it's better than having nothing you know nothing more boring than a character that has a that, that, that's blank take care you go in take care shriva have an awesome day thank you for hanging out i appreciate it okay so i saw something pretty interesting on the internet over the weekend to do with scenes um it's this and it it might seem a little bit convoluted at first glance but when you start to understand it it's really cool um because it really helps with the scene and i haven't even really begun on this myself but i saw examples of other stories that were where the, this was filled in and it just made things so clear with the scene and it really it makes it just makes you see the scene in a different way it makes you you know it it's internal conflict that's what it is it just adds a deeper meaning to the story and it also will stop the scenes being like random events of things it like will everything will carry on one after the other if you kind of follow this sort of framework with the scene um so i saw a lot of some writers talking about this and they were raving about it on youtube and online and um i was like mm, I'll, I'll try this with uh let's see how it goes with our scene um because we're making a scene now might as well attempt it while we're doing it and like i said this I haven't planned it, I've barely written it out, it's not even filled in, but I think let's give it a go and see if this little this little thing here, this little um, grid of four squares actually really helped with the scene. Because um, we did do a lot of improv last week, we were kind of like, what should the, what should they say now? Hmm, what should we say now? And I went a bit mind blank a few times with where to take things. Um, so sometimes like this might help this might help a lot um, but just so you know there's a few things that have been altered a touch and a bit of extra things added one thing I did add was another choice between two things with the hero um, because really ultimately the scene is about Rose's sacrifice the quest is called the sacrifice if you watch a story so far video which I'll put and chat again at the end of that video, it's only a two minute video, it talks about Rose being sacrificed. So you only need to watch that two minute video to understand what's happening in this scene. 
um because this carries on from that point it's the it's well it's technically this the second scene after that story so far because we've got carol's little flashback before then um, which we was doing a couple of weeks ago um, but I will be posting the scene in the Discord, actually. I need to update what's in there um, soon. Probably might do that this stream. Um, but, yeah, so all you need to do if you don't really, if you're a bit confused with what's going on in this scene, the story so far video will help a lot because um, you'll realise that this is the Sacrifice of Rose scene. And um, I felt that this choice was pretty, pretty important because... You know, is the hero going to give Rose to the monsters like he was asked to do? Or is he going to have a bit more compassion and be like, no, we're keeping her. And um, the interesting thing about this dialogue as well, I mean, it's not really necessarily going to change things to a great extent. Well, not this point anyway. Who knows? It might because I've always said that some of the choices made might affect things later on even way later on and you don't realise it and there might be an opportunity to for certain choices that seem pretty you know basic and simple at the start actually to make them into something big a bit later on in the game if there's an opportunity for that um but one thing it did do was allow carol to defect to show that she values rose because instantly um carol's either like no they're not having her or she's like yes we are having her um because right now the key thing from this scene is carol needs rose to paint a picture for her so she can find out where her family are including her son um, because rose is the only one that knows she's the witness she was there during the kidnapping and she cannot talk she's mute so painting a picture is the only way she can communicate with carol um that is really what this scene is about um most of all the fruits are in this scene yes the first boss of the fruits and they are part of this scene but they're not the key part of this scene the key part of this scene is carol and rose and their relationship and the fact that carol needs rose because this is the actual kind of main story arc in a way carol and her uh, her companions here they are so if you are new here you might not know much about these guys but if you've been in the stream for a while you probably do know them by now because we did spend a lot of february no not february march last month um well also some of january too because i had february off for the website creation um but we have i did spend a lot an awful lot of time with these guys um and they are really the MacGuffins of the game. They are the main plot of the game. Carol the Barrel is actually the main character of Raindrop Chronicles. Um, we've got our custom hero that we control as the player, that we play as in battle. Um, but he's a blank slate that you're kind of building into your own morality thing. Um, he's not actually a character, really. He's just an observer. Um... So really, Carol is really the main character when you think about it. And she, her story, and her finding these guys, her lost family, is kind of the main story arc plot that we're following at this point of the game. At this point, you know, things might change, but that's what it is right now. And... Um, you know, it's before I did did this little thing here, I was very focused on the fruits. I was like, oh yeah, we've got to make the fruits cool. They've got to be the best. They've got to be adorable. They've got to be... I was thinking just... I was like really thinking of the fruits. I wasn't thinking of Rose and Carol. But it wasn't until I did this and read how this actually works that I realised actually this is all about Carol and Rose. Like, it's about, it matters because of Carol and Rose and Carol realising that she needs Rose, which I should probably fill in here. 
um, which I didn't realize, I didn't actually click in my mind that that is really why the scene matters. It was always there and always existed. Um, that, but it just what it just wasn't at the forefront of my mind. It was all about the blooming fruits, which it can still be about the fruits, but really they're just they're just here because they're the first boss. They're the first real encounter um, boss wise for the game. And yeah, they're, fu they're a fun first boss, that's for sure. But no, they're not a main part of the story, no. And yes, there is a chance they'll reappear again as a side quest if you do keep them alive. And we can have an opportunity to make that call. But they aren't the key part of the scene here. Um, it, it's the painting and it's Carol and Rose that are. Could I bother you for a gander at the plot of my game sometime in the future? Yeah, sure. I mean... I don't mind if you shoot me a DM, um, sometimes it's, I, I have like considered closing my DMs at some points because there's been periods when I've had a lot and it's been impossible to keep up with because I am a busy person working on this, but I haven't closed them yet. Um, I feel like if it ever got to the stage where I was getting and couldn't keep up with DMs then I probably would, but totally like Shoot me a DM. I mean, I'll try and get back to you as fast like as I can. Sometimes I don't always get back super fast because some days I don't even go on Discord. But um, yeah, my, you, you, sure, sure, um, for sure. But yes. Um, so yeah, I need to fill it in, and I haven't filled it in. But just looking at it made me realise that that the scene is actually about Carol and Rose. So then I started putting the uh, dialogue together. Um, and this choice here kind of, well, Rose, she, she's gonna get happy. I was like, she, Carol's saying that she needs Rose, makes Rose happy. So she will give Rose a happy face. So I think that would be, that would be quite endearing. But Carol, <laughs> She, she, I don't know whether we'll go for this particular line, but I, I mean, it did work, but who knows, we could get something even better. So I've always, like, allowed suggestions if people do have something better. But really, the main thing to sum up from this dialogue line, let's uh, just label it. Um, whatever we have it as, even if we decide to change it up a little bit, the wording, for example. Um, ultimately, Carol kind of has to feel really a bit embarrassed. She's cringing over the fact that <laughs> there was a little bit of an affectionate moment there between her and Rose. Um, yeah, she's full on cringing. So she's gonna get ultra defensive, you know. She's gonna be like, no, um I'm not being nice to you here. I'm I only amusing you, basically. I'm I'm just using you. <laughs> I just want you to paint that picture for me, that's all. Um, so don't get being all happy like that. Um that's kind of Carol at that point. Um and because um, Carol's a Sundayer, a lot of you might know of that trope. It's a Japanese trope. It means hostile. It means, you know, a, you you can't really show love that that well. You get a little bit defensive, a little bit aggressive, but you have that soft heart underneath it all. It's just buried behind all that kind of meanness. And Carol's that. And uh, she's an interesting one. I think we have an opportunity to have a really, really endearing, unique character with Carol the Barrel. And there's a lot of opportunity for growth as well with Carol, which I like as a character. And as long as she's not annoying, I want to make sure that when she's hostile and mean, that it, she retains her charm. And she is funny and amusing and entertaining. Um, and yeah, sometimes she might be a little bit harsh. Like if she is a bit mean sometimes, you know, that's okay. You know, she's 
a hu I was about to say, she's a human being, humans have flaws, but she's not a human being, she's a barrel. But, um, but yes, if she does get a bit mean and you think, hang on, Carol, that is a bit, then it's not the end of the world, she can be mean, I'm not against that. But ultimately, I wanted to, to still be charming and endearing and lovable in her own weird way as a character. I don't want it to become this annoying character that people think, oh god, it's that barrel. Like, that is what I want to avoid. Um, I want people to like Carol. She's the main character of the story. The, the main NPC of the story, should I say. But she is the main character. We have a hero, but Carol really is the main character. Um, the artifacts, thank you so much for that follow. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream today. Hope your Monday is treating you well. So I'm going to just label this. Um, and I'm also going to... I'm also going to copy and paste this particular title and put it over here too. Just so people can see. Um, I want anyone who's hanging out in chat today to know that this is a first draft and there is an opportunity for dialogue suggestions. I'm all for people being like, that sounds a bit wooden. If you change it to that word or switch the sentence around, for example, that might work better. I'm, I will not be against that kind of thing, right? right which is why I've said, totally feel free to suggest ideas. Um, we were talking about like, constructive criticism earlier particularly unsolicited criticism and how i'm not a fan in this stream but that tends to be when it's about me and how i run my channel and stream i kind of don't like it when it's about that um and belief in me as a creator that's the sort of construct the you know not constructive criticism sorry unsolicited criticism i don't like but when it's kind of when i've opened it up to suggest dialogue ideas and all that it's all very open for people to suggest things because at the end of the day we want we want the best most entertaining scenes possible here so if we have to alter dialogue to make it sound better and be more entertaining we will do that you know i just want this to be good so there we go i might get rid of the grid though for now i think it kind of looks a bit prettier without the grid so the grid kind of keeps everything nice like you can align it properly but i do i do like looks a bit prettier like this um, doing all right, I'm just about to play a game, but your stream was recommended. I like your art so I thought I'd for a follow and check out the stream another time. Thank you, Artifacts. Well, I appreciate that and I hope you enjoy your game. Have a nice, chill Monday. That's for sure, Renda. I appreciate that follow and hopefully we'll see you soon. Okay, so I'm going to say... Um, It kind of weirdly lags a bit, this app does. Sometimes, only when it's saving, I've noticed. Um, so I'll just have to be patient. I'm not going to get all wordy there. I was thinking of Ryan and I, but we're fine with just that. Um, what app are you using? It's draw.io, I believe. Although it seemed like it's changed. It's diagrams.net now. It used to be draw.io, but it's diagrams.net now. Um, but I was, I did spend some of the weekend looking for other apps. I didn't spend ages because I didn't want to waste too much time. Um, and, and I really kind of didn't find anything that I liked as much as this one. Um, there was some that looked pretty neat and I liked the UI, the interface on them, but ultimately it didn't give me the, the look I liked because I really like how, I, how I've how i got the freedom to add images here so I can put the sprites with the dialogue boxes so people know who's talking. 
I just like that. So we'll carry on using this for now. So I'm going to say, Carol cringes at the thought of sharing an affectionate moment with Rose. Um, um, yeah, really that sums it up. She, she is not going to, Carol's not affectionate, you know, she... The only person she's probably affectionate with is Ollie, Oliver, the cookie jar. Um, this, that Carol's son there. Um, in the flashback, she shows that. But she, um, around almost anybody else, um, she gets, she really can get hostile. So, yeah, she is not going to be letting Rose have that happy face there. Um, and then, so really after that, I wanted to, to, to get it over and done with quickly because it's about, we got to move on to the conversation with the flute fruits. We've got a lot to do. We've got to share their plans and what they're up to. Um, but I feel like that was an important moment to get in. And we again have another choice here, which will, which we did start last week. We got to just expand on that. Um, but one thing I did add, like, if you say we're going to keep Rose, you gain compassion and you also um, will gain a Carol Romance point. And yeah, be aware, we could change this if we feel we should. But for right now, this works. Um, because you'd get the Carol Romance point mainly because, you know, it, it kind of shows that you care about Carol finding her family you you understand that carol needs rose and at this time you're not willing to sacrifice rose um so um and we haven't added rose romance points yet um we could easily add a Rose romance point here in this particular bit, but we don't know for sure that Rose is going to be a romanceable character at this point in time. Um, she could be, but I would ultimately like to put up a poll for all the other characters at some point that we start to get um, and um, clear this up whether certain characters should be romanceable or shouldn't be. And um, I'm definitely interested in opinions. But Rose could definitely work well as a romanceable choice. It's an interesting one being with a mute, romancing a mute, for sure. Um, question of the week, chaotic neutral. Chubb, you picked one of mine. I said true neutral and chaotic neutral are my favourites. So, um, Chubb is with me. We think alike, Chubb, sometimes. <laughs> but thank you for your answer. I'm super interested in what people enjoy the best. That's for sure. And like I said, I, I believe every alignment can be entertaining if you're if it's written well. Um, but we're usually always drawn to a particular one. Some are more entertaining to us than others. I am chaotic neutral. I, I don't know what I am. I think I'm a bit of a contradiction as a human being. So uh, it's, it's hard to put myself into one box. I've often thought I was true neutral, but sometimes I don't actually think I am because I can be very strongly opinionated. So neutral people tend to not be. They kind of are more neutral. <laughs> so I don't know what I am. Um, right, so let's let's think about filling in this little cool thing now, guys. So if you are a story writer or anything like that, you might find this this pretty interesting right now. Um, I this is very new to me. It's something I just discovered this weekend from doing research into good writing techniques. Because you know I've got to I've got to brush up on that if I want to create a good story here, guys. So, um, during my little adventure into learning some good writing techniques, this was what I found. Um, an established writer, 
someone who seemed very pretty awesome this is their technique and i was like yeah this makes sense you know this this could be pretty fun to attempt so i'm gonna give it an attempt um so the first boss box the cause is literally what happens in the first half of the scene and the consequence is basically the second half of the scene um it's this is literally what you see on the surface the plot what what you say it's easy to fill in because it's literally what happens that is first boxes there but it, these are the challenging ones these lower boxes because these are getting really into the layers of it all like why this why it all actually matters and what's all happening beneath the surface and these are the important things really because even me as the writer and you know have to think to answer these like i was sitting there thinking why why does it matter <laughs> why what is the realization i was like that for a while but you know that is exactly why it's important to fill them in because if you don't know why it matters then you're not you kind of might be preventing yourself from writing a really good story here you might not even realize things yourself as a writer and i think it's important to get deep understanding of that internal those internal layers um but yeah like i, I said earlier it made me realize that carol carol and rose probably second after carol are really the main reasons of this scene it's not the fruits i was all like fruits fruits the fruits oh my god let's make the fruits adorable yeah fruits i got really obsessed with the fruits and i forgot about the real meaning of this scene so um, and that doesn't mean the fruits don't have to be important we can still make them awesome but they aren't really the important thing we won't see the fruits again after this scene so they're just a entertainment value for the sake of this scene and to be a cool first boss of course um, i mean it's a lie when i said we won't see them again because we might <laughs> we might see them again if you pick to keep them alive you will see them probably in a side quest later in the game uh, but really they're they're very minor aren't they they're minor npcs um it's carol the barrel uh, star of the game that matters here and we want to flesh her out make sure she's frigging layered and an awesome character and hi Sherco hello my favorite vampires thank you how are you doing Sherco I hope you're having a good Monday okay so um like I said I was sitting here for a while thinking I don't even know how to fill this in um but according to the person who made this technique they said that wouldn't you do fill it in yeah you you love it you know you feel amazing and it like makes your story even greater i'm doing good hope you are well i'm doing good i'm doing decently um final fantasy 7 remake is out this week and i'm just waiting impatiently to see when it's going to come through my door because we don't know right now when things are going to get delivered so we'll see we'll see um but yes guys plans for this week just to go over it again we're continuing from what we was doing last week with putting these the dialogue together we'll get the framework of the scene done we'll get happy be happy with it and once we are um we will start to build the actual scene visually in our program rpg maker um but before we jump into that exciting stuff we need to make sure we've got this dialogue all planned and we're happy with it because obviously it'd be a bit overwhelming if we didn't know what we was doing next and that's how things get into a big giant mess so yes planning fun and there was a couple of like possible potential polls that i was going to put up example blueberry okay so for example i was thinking of cute baby words blueberry could say and the one that came up into my head was we we and that's just one that is like just the typical obvious one so i was like i'm very i'm very um interested on in making a list here 
and we could do this with a quick google but you guys could totally suggest cute baby wares as well at the end of the day blueberry we want to make blueberry adorable that's a goal here not annoying so i'm gonna put this it's important that blueberry is adorable not annoying so we've got to pick cute words um so if anybody knows any absolutely adorable words we will we could potentially you know add them here but for now we got we in <laughs> that's our that's our template right now um is there any way i'm i'm thinking i should turn this uh save off because it's it lags every time we get the save never used to do that you know but it has been recently but it's all right it's all right for now i found my first gray hair so i'm kind of sad today well if it makes you feel any better i have gray hairs and i've had them for years so it's an unfortunate part of getting older even you know when you're in your 20s and 30s you get them doesn't always mean you're getting old super old um, and usually the darker your hair is the more likely you're gonna get them as well probably because it stands out more um yeah unfortunate part of, of getting old but yes even me even the vampire who never ages the immortal vampire gets grey hairs, believe it or not. So yes, hopefully that makes you feel better. But you look sad oh, now. I know. I'm 30, by the way. And people think I'm still at high school, which I'm not going to complain. I only complain if people think I look 12, which people have done, believe it or not. I've had some think I'm a 12-year-old, like that young. If somebody thinks I'm 18 or 20, that's fine because that is, you know, old enough. <laughs> but if people think I'm 12, that kind of makes me think, what the hell? <laughs> it's just a little bit too young. Um, so um, I know I do do look like an older teenager or a uh, person in my early 20s for sure. But I am, uh, <laughs> I am actually 30. Uh, I was an 89 baby, actually. Um, which is why I'm a vampire, because I never age. I'm, I'm honestly convinced, guys, that in another 10 years, I'm still going to look like this. And I'm going to freak people out, because I'll be sitting here, like, saying, guys, I'm 40. And you'll be like, oh, but you look, you look 12. <laughs> it would be so creepy. But it's proof I'm a vampire, right? I told you I don't lie. And <laughs> proves it. I'm 32, 1990 kids. You look amazing for 30. A 40 year old, 12 year old, yeah. It's honestly my genes. Um, my mum was the same. I mean, she's she's 60 now, but she she probably, like, yeah, she looks younger than that. But he, he, especially when she was 40, she looked way younger than that you know and um i've kind of took after those genes not just my mom but my dad looks super young too and all my uncles so it, it's definitely a, a genes thing no it isn't it's because i'm a vampire <laughs> but yeah it's fun being a 90s kid you know living in the 90s everything was so different then sorry if i came up as kind of, oh no like it, I don't get creeped out by compliments, guys. Like, if you say I look good for my age, that to me isn't a creepy comment. If you, if somebody came in and was like, "Oh, you're you're se you're a sexy babe," I'd be like, um, "That's a bit inappropriate." <laughs> like, if someone came and saying that, there's a difference, isn't there? You know, there's a difference between a, a, a genuine, nice compliment that could be given to anybody. Um, and something that is like full on creepy. <laughs> I'm 29 and I think it's very lucky to be a 90s kid. Um, the things we got to experience. Yeah, like when you think about it, like when we were young guys, 
the internet was just getting invented. Like I grew up when the internet was just starting up. Um, I was lucky enough to have a computer and access to the internet. I think it was in about 1994, 1995. Um, I was a little, I was young, but I was lucky enough to have, and it was just so basic then. And it's so cool seeing how it's all grown over the last couple of decades. I have to turn the creepiness up a bit then. Well, we, we, <laughs> you don't want to get banned, Sherco. You've been doing so well. You would never do that to us. Okay. Um, so where were we? Okay, so we, we can fill in this little square. I think once we do fill in these squares, it's going to be super, it's going to make it a lot more easier to be happy with the scene and to, to fill in those little important gaps um, and we're not really too far off now I think we've done the hard stuff but this, there's certainly still a bit to do you'll never need more than one megabyte of RAM I remember that lol <laughs> all right that's stupid also it's right there do you guys ever get ulcers <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 massive. It's a big, giant, massive one. Okay, so so far I've got Rose begins to paint a picture of who took Carol's son, but are interrupted by a hostile group of fruits when they see Rose. Okay, so this bit's the honestly this is the easiest bit to fill in, so it shouldn't be a problem filling in the rest. We can just use our current summary, just shorten it a, a touch. Um, when the fruits. When the fruits see Rose. Okay, so it's hard to like sum up what they do because it all depends on what the hero says. They will react differently based on which of these you pick. So we can't really... Uh, we have to be a little bit, we don't have to be too specific there. Um, right, how did, what did, how did Plum say what he did? Um, he said, they brought her to us. Well, what we do know is that, we do know no matter what, that they want Rose. They, she's going to be sacrificed to these. That is ultimately what they know. Um, we know. Sorry, I'm not making much sense. I'm rambling a bit. Okay. Um, biting your lips and gums in your sleep. Maybe I did that then. Oh, no, I, I hate sleeping face down. I, already, I either sleep on my back or on my side. I, I cannot sleep on my tummy or my face. I find it super uncomfortable. But I know some people love that position, but I've never been one that does. Um, see, the consequence is actually a little bit easier to fill in than the than this box. Funnily enough, um, got the lag again. Because literally, we just need to put the battle happens. We we pee the we piss the fruits off, and a battle happens. That's literally the consequence. Um, the conversation leads to making that leads to the fruits confessing their nefarious plans and a battle begins um so really that is the consequence because uh no matter what it is going to lead to the battle i know we've got three choices here with how to handle the fruits but it will lead to a battle either whichever of the three is picked and i know that kind of is a bit weird because you think oh but what why if there's choices but the choices will you know be they will matter in other ways we might just not know how yet but i will try my best to but sometimes just having some different dialogue and feeling different stuff 
can be rewarding in itself but i want to go deeper than that with the choices that's for sure and not including just the compassion and romance points either that's an obvious thing that the choices do but i want to go deeper in terms of how it affects your relationships with characters other than that and the world in general and how how npcs will react to you in the future as well Okay, so we don't, I don't know if we have to expand that any more than that. Um, right, do we even need that bit? Okay, so. Okay, so before this scene, I'm not going to like get super, I'm not going to get super detail or think about this too much, even though it is important to, but I'm mainly going to just write a rough draft now, I think. Um, and I can also, I can improve it off stream if I think of anything better as well. So, um, before this scene, Carol didn't give a damn about Rose. <laughs> right, so really, to sum it up, she didn't give a damn about Rose because this is proof. She is like, I'll be glad to see you sacrifice to these monsters we're about to meet. Yeah, that's what she, that is exactly what she said to Rose. Um, so before this scene, Carol didn't care about Rose and would and was glad would be glad to see her sacrificed to the monsters I'm going to definitely have to turn that save auto save feature off because every time it starts <laughs> it lags I blame diagrams.net things were better when it was draw.io um, before this scene Carol didn't care about Rose and would be glad to see her sacrifice to the monsters of Everbloom Forest it is Carol realises she needs Rose. Really? That, we can keep it as brief as that, but I'm sure there's a lot of room to expand. And on the template, there was an and so thing as well. I'm not sure what to put there right now, but I'm sure there's an opportunity to add something to that. Um, but it's, it's good. I like this because it, it challenges me to think deeper and challenges me to consider things I wouldn't have considered about, considered about the scene and the characters and that is how you create layers and make the story better in, to, to simplify it so yes um, it can be a bit daunting because you're like oh crap I don't know what to put there but like I say layers get a better story from it so it's worth it um, and so I could just put Carol um, starts becoming a little nicer to Rose but not much because I think that's important to say we don't we don't want it to suddenly be like, oh, Carol thinks the world of Rose is, Rose is everything to Carol. No. Carol's still going to be an asshole to Rose. <laughs> Just a little nicer. Like, you know, I'm not... There's not going to be this sudden change in Carol's 
how she treats Rosie. Just a little step, a little step to becoming nicer to Rose. Um, and um, I think like that is really everything with Carol the Barrel. She doesn't like humans. She, it's a journey for her to realising a lot of things, I think, Carol. Self-identity and about who you are. She's a barrel. And um, I think we've got a lot of interesting themes to explore there with Carol the Barrel. We could go super deep. <laughs> we really could. I might actually spend this whole stream at some point talking about those themes that we could potentially explore. Um, I mean, we could do it right now. We're on, we're on the topic of that, but at the same time, we got a scene to write. Um, but ultimately, as well, Rose is not going to get sacrificed. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really talked about that much. That's what it's about. Rose gets sacrificed, but we will. We will deal with these fruits, we will battle them, and it will end in Rose being okay. Um, obviously, there could have been the opportunity to, a choice, we, if we wanted to, to actually kill Rose off and let the fruits have her, if we really wanted to take the choices far, but we're not doing that because Rose is a playable character and so only the start of the story. Uh, it, it's a little bit... A little bit premature, I think, to get rid of Rose. And someone, I think, did suggest at once, at one point, that we could it could be a fake out. We could do a Rose death fake out where we thought she got sacrificed, but she comes back later. That could have totally worked, but I don't really think it's going to work for how the story's going, especially because Rose is so key. She knows what Carol, she knows information that Carol needs, so she's key. We can't have her disappearing, you know. She has a painting to paint here that's going to tell us a lot of info and fill this mystery up for Carol the Barrel. So, for that reason, she cannot die yet. We can't even have a fake out because we need her. Um, but really, yes. The whole like Rose being sacrificed, it was, a, I guess, a plot device to make Carol realise how valuable Rose is and that no, yeah, she did want it. She didn't give a damn about her before this scene and she was kind of glad to see her sacrificed. Um, but things start changing at this point. But it's for selfish reasons right now. Um, it's entirely selfish. It's entirely for selfish reasons. So it's not Carol actually finding goodness in her heart and compassion for Rose. It's just for selfish reasons. But it's still a step forward. There's a whole game ahead of us. So there's an opportunity for things to slowly, for Carol to grow even more. But it has to be a gradual change. So, um... only wants Rose for the purpose of painting a picture of who took her I don't know if that makes sense, let me read it. Too wordy. To anyone's rose. So she can. Yeah, I don't know the word in that's perfect, but I understand it, so that's fine. Um, uh, 
Um, but it's entirely for selfish reasons. I don't think we need to put that actually because we know. Um, though it's entirely for selfish reasons, we don't want to get too repetitive. We just want to own right what matters. Um, it's still a step up from not caring at all about what happens to Rose. Um, So, I don't know, like, I'm interested, like, as well with chat, like, those of you that do know what's happening at this point in the story. So, I probably will stick in the dialogue channel on the Discord um, for peeps to give feedback, those of, those of you that get, that, like, understand the story at this point. So, I know a few of you might not. And, and just see if, like, there's anything else at all, like, that people might have realised that I actually haven't. Because um, there could potentially be a lot, a lot of hidden layers with what's going on here. Um, the question is though, once Rose has painted the painting, I've just realised this, when Rose has painted the painting, Carol doesn't need Rose anymore then. She'll have done the job. She'll have done what's necessary. Carol will have her information. Um, so I'm intrigued to know what will happen, I guess, once Carol's got what she's wanted. Um, but yeah, she... Even if Rose does the painting, there's still a lot of... Uh, details that carol might still be wondering about so she might like still value rose to some degree so i'm not 100 percent sure about apple's dialogue right now but ultimately i just want to show he's of a different opinion and um disagrees doesn't really want to go ahead with this rose plan. Um, so I've called him green one instead of apple. I feel like calling him apple feels like a little bit personal when he's just met him. Just my opinion. But I know. I'm curious with opinions. Um... I also think Tomato could potentially be more evil here. So I'm going to put a note here too. Okay, so a way to make this all to serve every 10 minutes instead of every second, I wonder. Because right now it's happening with every single edit. Configuration. to look for the save thing I know it's a pain in the, in the butt <laughs> and I want to sort that out um, so, hmm. um Um, 
I'm gonna have to Google this. This is silly. Diagram start now. Yeah. Auto save. Don't know. Don't know. Tomato is the most evil of the fruits, after all. Um, we can have judge and reveal our plans to strangers. I think it shows he's a little bit ruthless. You know, who cares? Um, I don't know if we call her old lady again. I mean, we could, but could be a little bit repetitive. I did try and I did actually get rid of some of the name calling because Lemon was going to call Carol a name as well because it started to get a little bit repetitive. The constant name calling, although it can, it's an opportunity to be witty. And it's quite amusing. Sometimes I think you've got to, be, got to be a little bit careful not to overdo it all the time. So I did cut some. Um, so we don't have to be strangers. Let's be friends. Compassion plus one. Don't fear us. We're just here to give Rose to you. If you're up to no good, I'll have to stop you. Um, so that is kind of what we're going for with the choices and that's just the basic first draft dialogue for those um, so we have we're gonna just alter this just a touch why do we have speech marks on these they're in boxes so we don't actually need to put these in speech marks I don't think that's what we've been doing nope we haven't so, we can get rid of those. I have to get rid of this save, this constant auto save with every little change I make. Guys, it's driving me insane. And you never used to do it, so I'm a little bit confused. Page setup, I don't know if that's going to be it. I did look. Um. Nope, all that does is change the background image and size. Auto save. There it is. See, I don't want it unticked. I still want to auto save. I just don't want it every with every single change I make. I'd rather it be in, like in intervals, time intervals. But I'm gonna have to turn it off, unfortunately, because it's getting silly how it's every second. Um, okay, so let's just hope I don't lose work. <laughs> That's just why the autosave is necessary sometimes. Um, I might have to just manually do it myself every now and then. Um, okay, so I'm going to just alter Clubman's dialogue just a touch. So, friends, I don't trust humans. They bait my uncle into a pie. I don't know with that particular line makes sense i don't know if baked as a verb there fits I, I mean i might be wrong but something about it sounds a bit off but it, sometimes these things are in my own head and they actually make perfect sense um they turn my mother into juice yeah okay so i change it to they um but i'm gonna it, it is on they at the moment, but I'm going to reword this into something because I think it's going to make the scene work better. Um, instead of saying, I don't trust humans, they bait my uncle into a pie and, and they turn my mother into juice. I'm going to reword it so it's aimed at these. So instead of calling humans they, I'm going to say you. Because we, the hero, is a human. And 
apple, these fruits, what well, apple, I just say apple, the fruits, uh, they're kind of like lumping humans all into this one bracket. So just because one human did it, or a group of them ate their fellow fruits, they see it as all humans did it, so they're all bad. I think that's a little bit more effective than it, them calling humans a they for this particular sentence because it's going to lead to, it could potentially lead to the next bit of dialogue that I was thinking of doing, which is Carol the Barrel saying, um, move that across. We'll read that over again in a minute. So good for you. Um, I do like the grid for keeping everything aligned. You have to say, right? So, um, so Carol is going to say something like. Now this is interesting coming from Carol and I think we have to be careful as well not to make her too much of a friend to humans because she hates humans herself. But she's the only character that really makes sense to say it, say this, other than Apple. Apple could potentially say it, but I think it'll be more entertaining coming from Carol. Look. Um, I don't trust flashbacks either. But these probably weren't the flashbacks. Look, I don't trust flashbacks either, but these weren't the flashbacks that ate your uncle and mother. Something like that. And I don't know if that's perfect. I can be a super perfectionist about how dialogues were, did so. I um, get, oh, I don't know about that. But it's basically what I'm trying to go for here. Um, Carol is actually defending humans for once, flashbacks, as she calls them. Um, because they're being ridiculous, let's say of it. Like, just because, <laughs> um, you know, humans did that to their fellow fruits doesn't mean the hero or us as a party did that. Like, you know, they're aiming it directly to us. And it brings up some interesting themes once again about, you know, races and stereotyping and putting people into the same bracket and all that ridiculousness. Um, so it's an interesting thing and um, I kind of like that that's being brought up here. Um, so at this point, because we have here comp the compassion route, guys. So this is the compassion route, as you can see, plus one compassion. Um, can we move that up? Um, this is a compassion route and we have actually written the aims for each of the routes here and how it's all gonna conclude this scene. Um, and we'd have as the first part of the compassion route the fruits begin to trust the party and admit the truth so that's the first thing we got to do and as you can see the fruits don't trust us and it isn't until carol and apple next you know actually make them yeah yeah you might be right so apples and they're gonna listen to apple more than carol obviously because apple's one of them um and to be honest it's not 
I think they'd be okay with Carol because she's not a human. She's a sentient object just like them. But I think they don't like how rude Carol is. They, Carol was rude to Tomato. And she vandalised their property or encouraged the vandalism of their property. So they automatically do not like Carol because of that. Um, they're chaotic evil. They probably don't like many people. Um, apart from Apple, of course. He's the only reasonable one, which is why Apple is always going to be the one that says the reasonable stuff and not the others. Um, so... The lady makes a fair point. Whether he calls a lady or not, I don't know. But he's polite. I imagine Apple being quite the uh, gentleman. <laughs> More than the others, so. So uh, he definitely doesn't call her old lady or anything uh, derogatory. Um, so yeah, he, he could say something like that and then at that point the fruits will be like, oh, okay if Apple says so, he's our leader, so yeah, uh, we'll trust you then And then they're gonna admit what they're really doing No secrets, no fronts, they full-on will admit their plan in this um, route and then the battle just begins because the party are clearly horrified and they're like, right, you got to be stopped. So basically the way that is, the, you know, you've gone the compassion route, you've tried to tend being friends with them and they actually have been like, okay, then we'll trust you. But obviously they're so evil that when they admit and start to trust you and tell you their plans, you're not going to agree with it because it's ridiculous what they're doing. Um, so that kind of sums up the compassion route and of course this is just me this is just my idea and I like I say you guys if you have feedback and you think actually the compassion work route could work if it was like this instead um, or that bit was altered because it'll flow better or for whatever reason I'm totally up for hearing that too Drago how you doing hello hello raindrops three more <laughs> three more until you get to a shower yeah and i'm how far am i from being a leviathan chub Ch Ch cheeks oh I, I was gonna say chub cheeks stole the command from me he got in there be fast but it did it for me as well um chub you're nearly a maelstrom um because i i added another rank just so you know guys tsunami used to be the highest but then i thought we could well it wasn't actually me it was a suggestion from someone who hangs out here elite i think it was um said leviathan would be a really good top rank for this stream because it's water themed like raindrops and it's also like an actual powerful summon in vinyl fantasy games so it's actually really relevant so i thought yeah leviathan is top rank and that is definitely more badass than a tsunami um so that is what is the highest rank and not even i have got that yet you can see i the streamer even needs three thousand plus raindrops to get to the top rank up you know you'd think i'd have got that by now i've been streaming for three years no not quite three years but it will be three years at some point this year when i for the time i've been streaming holy crap guys that is a lot of raindrops i'm part of twin after are you obsessed with final fantasy 14 now coming up with things like that chub i'd say you must be which is awesome I'm, I'm happy if you're obsessed with it will be three years chub remembers yes that will be my three-year anniversary the summer mid-year guys is when i'll have been streaming on twitch for three years um but raindrop chronicles if you didn't know we're basically on a year since we started this project guys it was april um it was april last year when we had our very first stream i think it was definitely around this period anyway so yeah it's been a year 120 streams in a year guys and that's really good because we did have some hi hiatuses we did have a few breaks 
in between in, within that year. So I'd say getting 120 streams under our belt, even with some breaks, is pretty good. Three years since you came back or something because I think you did a bit of streaming before July, but you had a break. Yes, I did stream in 2016, but it was for only two weeks, so I don't tend to include that because I hardly got started. It was more testing and seeing if I enjoyed streaming, and then stuff happened, so I couldn't really get involved with it too much. Um, but yeah, my proper go of it was... 2017 the middle of 2017 was when i got up and running on twitch properly and started making a serious attempt at streaming okay so um so we could either do it that we do work on all compassion route first or we work on each of the routes a bit a bit at a time and then gradually you know put them together so i think i want to work at them them a bit of a time that's kind of what i'm thinking will work best for me so we've got the start of the compassion route mapped out but we've also got the wisdom and bravery route to do um so what i am going to do is switch wisdom and bravery around because it's actually wisdom that's the second choice um so this the wisdom fruit is don't fear us we're just here, we're here to give rose to you um it lacks the compassion that the first one has it's a little bit more colder um you know you're like yeah you can have rose um and you can still say that even if you pick that option um if it makes sense I, it, it will say i feel like there's nothing wrong with the hero changing his mind because he wants to be a little bit more clever about how he how he gets the fruits on side so um that would be the clever option because rose is what they want so that is the right wise thing to say to get them on side and bravery is just full on being like yeah you are up to no good and I'm going to stop you. Full on Leroy Jenkins. Brave but reckless. Not always the wisest. Um, but, you know, just because bravery and wisdom and compassion sometimes clash doesn't mean you have to be one of the three. I kind of definitely want Raindrop Chronicles to be, you know, say you've got a bit of all of these traits if you wish or two of them, you know. Um, okay, so they thank the hero for bringing them the most important component they need for their masterpiece. Okay, um, let me just check my notes and see. Yeah, so I think a good, another good thing to do if we do go for the wisdom route here, where we say we'll give rise to you, is get have a little bit of a reaction from Carol, especially because Lemon's talking about Carol in his line here and says he's got a bad, bad pit feeling about that one. So it only makes sense for Carol to speak, to provoke that from Lemon. Um, and it would just be something like, something like this maybe. Um, would it be an M dash or a dot, dot, dot? Either probably. Just to show again, Carol is not happy with with uh, the hero wanting to give Rose to them. She is like, no, you, we need Rose because I'm a super selfish barrel and I wanted to paint that picture for me. <laughs> that is what Carol's intentions are completely selfish right now. It's not because she cares about Rose. But poor Rose, poor sweet innocent Rose. She, she was smiling because she thought Carol actually liked her um i kind of like showing right rose's naivety there i think it makes her endearing especially when she's sad when carol's like no don't be getting your hopes up and get cringing over the affection the affectionate moment 
Um, and then lemon would be like, I got a bad feeling about that one. But something that I wouldn't, I thought of actually. Um, something that I thought about was this. Just a slight change with this pun here. Um, I don't know if lemon suits saying the pun. I'll be honest, he's more stoic. He's the serious stoic one, guys. So what I was thinking of doing was just switching things around a bit and making Blueberry say it instead because he's the baby. He kind of misspells stuff anyway. So having it as a sort of double thing where we we're doing a pun but also having the baby say it kind of works so similar to how we said really grateful how we will say that we could um do it with this too um he got a bad peeling so change it to feeling for lemon and blueberries like he got a bad peeling uh, i i don't know that's just my opinion i'm like if anybody's going to get said the puns, it would be um, either, you know, the more, the characters that aren't the stoic serious ones because it, it's all about context with puns, isn't it? Um, I did ask that question in our stream last week. I said, so what do you guys think about puns? Um, and a lot, some of the answers I got was they're great, but it depends on the context of the scene. Sometimes they're not, it's a bit like, takes you out of it a bit if the scene's serious or and this scene yeah it's 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 kind of a very quirky silly scene because we've got living fruits here so having puns is totally in context and tone of this this particular scene it might not in certain scenes that are more dark and serious but this one works okay to have the puns but we still got to make sure that it's the we get the character's voice is right and it's the right one saying the puns i believe so i think another reason this also works in my opinion is because i purposely am trying to design this dialogue so that blueberry always follows lemon with something whenever lemon talks so does blueberry if you i don't know if you notice guys it's, but every time lemon speaks so does blueberry here and this is this is the only other time so only twice at this point but that's kind of something i want to purposely do to show that their relationship um in a subtle way um there will never be a time that lemon talks and blueberry doesn't say something after lemon um he's like he's blueberry's daddy <laughs> basically and oh, thank you, Echo, Echo Studios, for that host. I appreciate that. Oh, but there's no right. I don't think I did. And sorry about thanking you so late as well. I've, I always get super carried away when I'm on. I've been talking about this sometimes. And then I came along and knew you had to continue because you couldn't bear to lose contact with me. <laughs> yeah, Chubb, I appreciate you. You've been great here. Um, it would be a funny moment now and to show that they are new to the concept of language and have someone say you know the word is feeling right peeling is what humans do to lemons yeah like yeah that's bad peeling is a horrible word it's a it's a swear word peeling to fruits is like the f word to you know or, you know the c word or the n word to to these guys it's like the worst word you know because <laughs> they they get peeled and it's not a good thing in their eyes um and it, it, it I, I do agree that approach would be interesting if someone told blueberry off for it because it kind of makes us think oh bless him cutie and then all of a sudden he shows himself to be evil later it'll make it even more of a shock so um so yeah those are the reasons i listed off why this works with lemon with blueberry saying it instead of lemon because i purposely always want to make blueberry say something after lemon every single time to show their closeness in a non-obvious way where we're not forcing it down the players or audiences throats um 
I think that's a card can be effective. Um, and um, also because lemon doesn't really suit being the one doing the puns, he's stoic. And Blueberry being the baby of the group, and yeah, he's just grasping language at this stage in his life. He, if anybody's going to miss say, say something wrong and say words wrong, it's Blueberry. So him being the pun person is really, really works cool, works great. Um, and it also will make, hopefully, the audience like Blueberry more because he I got that extra charm from these little lines and that makes it more of a shock when he shows that he's actually a psychopath <laughs> so um that's cute i like the relationship between them i do as well like i really like the relationship and in the fight it makes it even cuter because lemon actually protects blueberry in the fight you guys i haven't shown the fight for ages not for the last few months so when we go back to the fight once we've done this scene you'll see it then I don't think it's that bad, but it's pretty bad. <laughs> Maybe not that bad, no. And, oh, yeah, you're going to sleep midnight in Australia. I bet. I bet it's late. But thanks for hanging out, Twisted Mouse. I appreciate that. Character creation looks like it's going well. Super cute idea. So it should be popular. Thank you. I appreciate the kind words. We have, we have lots of fun here. Like, we, we've been working on dialogue the last few streams because we kind of use this little program to put all the branches together and get everything organized and we do that before we jump into the scene creation in the actual engine so i'd say probably today and maybe tomorrow we'll be finishing this all off and then at the end of the week we're going to jump into the program rpg maker mv and actually put the scene together and i'm super excited for that um so uh it's been a lot of fun just to con to like get into role play and think about what these characters are going to say. Um, but this has been kind of helpful too. This little uh, four box grid here, which I've been filling in. And I'm kind of going to attempt that with each of the scenes and see how that works as well. Um, and that Disco Lick doesn't work anymore. Hi, Tom. Yeah, it's really weird because for some people it works and for other people it doesn't. I've had a few before say it doesn't work. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes it do the link is broken for some people, but it isn't for everyone, which makes it really strange. Um, I don't know whether it's mobile. Are you on mobile, Tom? I'm trying to still work out the reason why it is broken for some people. But what I can do is... Um, let me just... I don't know if it's going to show anything sensitive here. So I'm just going to use the copy version here. I'm going to send... That might work. I don't know if I'll work. Let me know, um, Tom, or anybody else that joins a Discord. Um, I still need to work out why that link is broken for some of you. It's a strange one, that. Um, but hopefully that'll fix it. That's just a normal link I've just generated, guys. Um, which program are we using for dialogue? We are using RMV for our project as well. Awesome. Well, it's always good to meet more RPG maker folks. So it's, I don't tend to advertise or like promote like on my title and stuff that I'm using RPG maker. And that's only because str I'm struggling for room in the title since adding a question of the week to the stream. Otherwise, I'd have it there. But I do have a command. I have a command for the program. So if anyone ever does come in and like, what's this engine? And I've got that right there to, to use because um, I do like to talk about RPG maker and, and explain why it's a so good and ideal for our project. So uh, I like to try and put attention to it, but at the same time, I like to, the whole collaboration of our project is really the the key thing that I think is the biggest appeal of our project, but that's awesome, but you, I'd love to hear more about your project. We have the creative work channel in our Discord, by the way, um, so anyone that is working on their own project, whether it's a game or a story or anything at all, anything creative, um, feel free to pop it into our channel um, and tell us a bit about your project. I made the Creative Work Channel especially for, for that sort of thing. Um, and which program are you using for dialogue? This is actually, it, it 
It used to be called Draw.io, but in the last week it's changed names to Diagrams.net. Um, and uh, yeah, strange. And it's it's pretty cool. It's not perfect. There's a few little criticisms I have with the program, but it works and I like what it does. I have tried to look for alternatives, but nothing has done the job like this. So I'm sticking with this for the time being. Um, so I'm on the wrong dialogue bit here. <laughs> I'm on the, our previous scene that we did before this one. Um, I'll check it out. Yay, thank you for joining. It's good to have you there. The game is pretty good, but everyone knows Raindrop Chronicles 7 is the best one. Well, there will, there might be a Raindrop Chronicles 7. It's in episode 7. Because our game is episodic, guys, if you're new here. Um, it's going to be an ep episodic game. Just so we can get something playable out at a reasonable speed. So you're not waiting years and years for a game. Um, so episode one, I have said 2020, but it is probably going to be late 2020 if it will be 2020 because there is a bunch of content to still do that we've got planned. We don't, we want it to be, we don't want it to be too super short, do we? We want stuff, content, plenty of content in episode one. So if I have to increase the release date i will um but we'll say it's still a little bit early to give any dates or roundabout dates right now um but as we get through the year we'll see we'll see where we are after the summer and then we might have more of an idea for an actual release date i was making a bad joke it's actually a good joke because there will be <laughs> well i don't we don't know how many episodes there will be but there's every chance, you know, with with the epic I've got in mind for us here, so to have that many episodes. I've used Twine in the past, but this looks better in my opinion. Yeah, Twine was one I actually downloaded to see what that was like, but although it looked really cool and easy to use, the interface, which I liked, um, it wasn't as visual. Like, I really like how it's letting me put my own sprites in. I literally just drag drag to the png from my file explorer on onto into this app and it, they were there the sprites um and i just like doing that for visual reasons in all honesty just to make the boxes look a little bit prettier just so we've not got boring boxes on the screen and so you guys can actually see which characters saying what line because some of you especially if you're new, new here carol and rose you're not going to know who they are um and it, i think it'll just help seeing that character there it just adds it's just more fun isn't it i think it's more fun um so that's consistently what i've been doing when doing this um with your sprites is awesome yeah thank you so really that is ultimately why i like this program because it's very flexible that you can do whatever you want with your boxes whereas twine i mean i might be wrong because i haven't really looked into it properly but from what i saw there wasn't much customization there with how you could make your your flyers look so um this is why we're sticking with this and it does have its flaws like it's a it, it can get a bit laggy if you put too much on the screen and also I've noticed a little problem with the autosave lagging lately so I've had to turn autosave off and manually save it and sometimes it can just be a little bit of a pain when you're changing fonts and colours and that but it's just little small things it's nothing that's going to make me stop using the software because nothing else is as good as it as it so does the job as well so might as well stick with with what we used to for sure okay so folks um we are coming towards the second half of our scene um here with our dialogue so it's all started here and we've done all this so far i've put some little red boxes underneath the dialogue um, as just description, little bits, little notes for you guys to read um, about the characters, just to like say what sort of voice the characters have and if we could improve that dialogue at all to add something else. Um, so I, I, I tend to write those little red boxes for that reason. And. Um, we are getting to where the point where the choice has split the scene into different routes. 
and we got a compassion root. Let me get rid of the grid just for a bit. We have our compassion root, wisdom root, and bravery root, which are the morality traits of our game. Um, most choices give us either plus or minus points in those three traits. Um, it's kind of like the love brains and the brawn thing. Like I think Horizon Zero Dawn had a very similar moral um, feat, feat system mechanic in their game. They had the love, the brawn and the brains thing. And our compassion, wisdom and bravery everything follows that same, that same uh, template. And um, so you can either gain plus or minus points in those things with your choice. Because our hero, he'll never talk off his own back. Every single dialogue that the hero comes out with is your what you want to say. It's always a choice. He'll never say anything without your input if that makes sense. It's very inspired by some RPG games like Mass Effect, for example, Fallout, with how you can, your hero talks. So he's like your blank slate that you build into your own moral person or person without morals, however to your liking throughout the game. And yeah, it could affect you greatly, depending on how you build your hero. Certain quests will be locked out to you. Certain ones, you know, certain NPCs might not want anything to do with you based on how you built your character up. Um, it's all very interesting. It's one of the bits I like most about the game. Um, so yes, at the moment, the scene has split into three different routes. So we're just putting those routes together right now. And at some point they'll probably meet and it will all end with the battle encounter beginning. So that's what we're working on now, making it all fit and work. So it is the second half of the scene. And then once those done, once we've worked on what those three paragraphs say, the scene's over, the battle starts, but we will have a scene after the battle, of course, but we will work on that afterwards, once we've done the battle. We'll be, we'll be focusing on this scene first and foremost. So, we're making decent progress. Um, I'm getting hungry, so I might get my snack very soon. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I was right. The last thing I was saying was I was rambling on about the relationship with lemon and fruit um, and how blueberry, lemon and fruit, lemon and blueberry. Boy, I say words wrong sometimes. Um, so, lemon and blueberry are close, and I'd want to do my best to make sure that is shown in a non forced way. You know, in a way where you you think, oh, blueberry always says something after lemon speaks, and um, so something was suggested um, by Chub about the so one of the fruits maybe telling off blueberry at this point because he said a word that they don't like. Peel, peeling's a very triggering word for these fruits because they don't want to be peeled because they I mean they will die so i'm going to just reread what fruits chub said um it could be a funny moment now and to show they are new to the concept of language and have someone um say you know the word is feeling right peeling is what humans do to lemons right so if anybody is going to tell blueberry off i feel it would be Plum, not lemon, for the simple fact that lemon will never tell Blueberry off because he loves them so much. Um, Plum is kind of the teacher. Um, I think we kind of established that here. Um, we kind of got the Plum being the mentor for Tomato and Blueberry because they're the babies of the group. So um, I think it could be Plum. It feels to me that he would be the one to to tell Blueberry, you know, that's not a good word. Um, so let's get our grids back because it's a lot easier to place these dialogue boxes when I can see the grid. Um, I 
and we have another opportunity for blueberry to have a pun there as well we've got we're really grateful as well down here and i really like that one even though we haven't got grapes in this uh, gang of fruits i still really like it um so that'll be an opportunity for blueberry to say that at some point too i'd like to fit that in M lemon here we've got a line from that i really like their meddling is leaving a sour taste in my mouth i think that's a really good line um shows lemon's kind of hard personality and it's a pun yes we've got sour taste in the mouth it's a pun and i did say earlier yeah lemon's too stoic to say puns but in this particular line i think it works because it's not like there's a misspelling or anything like that it's not anything overly silly like we're really grateful or i've got a bad peeling that's more childlike and suited to blueberry when it's that kind of pun but lemon this particular pun i think works for lemon quite well it's just finding a place for it and i think we will find a place for it at some some point in this uh this conversation in one of the branches um give me your session that's to be honest that is a clever one and i don't know if we'll have a place for it because you know as much as i want to overdo the puns yeah you know it's we'll say i mean i am gonna copy and paste it because you never know i always like to at least consider everything you can regret it otherwise so i am going to put pop that in my notepad file strove thank you for for that and how are you doing today i hope your monday is going going okay and i hope you're having a relaxing one okay so let me just before we do the plum dialogue we'll get rid of that because that isn't the one we're gonna have um uh so oh, they're down the hero for bringing the most important co component they need for their MSP. So that's definitely going to be Plum that says that as well. Um, so it's just thinking that if we do this line where the Plum tells off Blueberry, um, we need to make sure it flows well into the, this wisdom route, what we've got written here, which I'm sure we can do if we rack our brains together. Um, just relax on my lunch break. Ooh, yummy. I hope you've got a yummy lunch. And that has made me hungry, so I've got to go get my snack soon. I get really carried away with this. <laughs> it's hard to get my butt off the chair sometimes. But I always have my dinner straight after stream anyway, so um, it's not like I'm not going to eat. Okay, so I think I need to put more space in and gap between these choices. This is kind of how I've um, done it in the past. Let me have a look. Oh, actually, it works fine like that. Uh, I just need to make sure it looks okay. Because we might get some longer dialogue boxes and I don't want them to overlap or anything. Okay, so he got a bad feeling. Plum could... I imagine Plum would say something like... You do know... That's a bad word, don't you? Or something like that. He's, he's very calm, Plum is, so he's not going to like be super like mad or telling off blueberry he'd do it in a calm manner i'd say um so to blueberry sometimes i put like um who they're saying it to just so i remember but i don't put every action in brass brackets or asterisks because it can get a bit over the top some of it's straightforward so we don't need to put that most of that's going to be the actual scene building and directing when we consider who the characters are facing and moving towards so i want to try and make sure we're on the dialogue 
rather than thinking about actions right now. But it's also good to at least consider it. So, um, two blueberry. Um, so this is exactly what Chubb said. So I'm going to put this in there as a template. So, Plum is the dot, dot, dot guy. I've, I've, I'm trying to, he's probably not going to be the sort that uses exclamation marks because I'm trying to have his voice be the calm one. Um, as you can see, Blueberry has exclamation marks every time he talks. But Plum's more dot, 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 the trait, the one who trails off his sentences. And I know that can, you can, that can be overdone, that sort of thing, exclamation marks, dot, dot, dots. But at the same time, I want to give characters their own voice. So certain ways I'm going to word the dialogue will try and show that, if that makes any sense. Um, your attitude is the pits, Master Ellipsis. Yeah, he's Master Ellipsis, that's for sure. And it, we won't, he won't say it after every single line like here. You bet my uncle into a pie. That doesn't have dot, dot, dot. Because I don't want to overdo it. But, you know, I want it to kind of be there when it suits. Um... I think having feeling in italics could work because we in RPG Micro MV we do have a plugin that allows us to make the words into italics for emphasis. So I'm really glad we have that plugin because it can add a lot to certain lines. And I actually prefer doing the italics to add emphasis rather than capital letters personally. I think it's subjective. What's a preference there? But I think it looks a little bit less over the top and it's a bit more subtle um you know the word is feeling right peeling is what humans do to lemons so they also do it to apples right what what fruits can you peel now i want i'm actually wondering because my brain's gone blank and i'm no fruit experts lemons can be peeled can't they they can i'm sure i think they can just want to make sure i say these facts right um Um, so at this point, I mean that can go up. Um, Blueberry is oblivious. I don't even think he'd say anything back. Uh, he's just like it's a oblivious little boy. So we could totally move the conversation on to something else. Because like I said, we want we do want to get to the point. Um, it's always nice to put these little touches in just to give that characterization and uh, we don't want it to be all a ton of exposition but um, at the same time we don't want the scene to drag on and we don't want fluff it's about getting that balance and I've always said every line every dialogue box if it adds something plot wise or also enhances the character makes them more interesting then it's worth keeping but if it's there and you think actually it's not going to make a difference if we get rid of this dialogue box then it's probably just fluff um so yes this is a dialogue heavy game but that doesn't mean it's going to have fluff you know there's a difference you can have a dialogue heavy game that you know only has dialogue when necessary which is what I always try to do because I hate fluff. It's weird because I love dialogue. I love dialogue and dialogue heavy stuff, but not with fluff because I just tend to drift off. You know, I'm, I, I'm inclined to start skipping. I want to make sure when I'm playing a game or anything that has loads of dialogue in, what I like is to always be excited at what that next box is going to say. I want to be interested and not feel inclined to want to do that and that's kind of my goal here with all my scenes i want to make sure i try my damn tardis to keep the dialogue entertaining and fluff free so that my players don't feel tempted to to you know skip i want them to be invested in the story here 
that's important to me. Oh my goodness, willow scale. Look at that gigantic red, Missy. How are you doing? Hi guys, Coast Bro. Ingol, how are you guys doing? Thank you so much for bringing the people, Zyra. That is a, a hell of a lot of peoples. My goodness, how was your stream? I appreciate you. Thank you very much. How are you guys doing? I hope your stream went well, guys. Make sure you're following Willow Scale, um, also known as Charlie. If you love your RPG games, which if you're in my stream, you obviously do. Because why would you be here unless you like my accent, of course. So I'm only come for the accent. But we are mostly RPG nerds in this stream because we're making an RPG. So I'll uh, give you guys a little bit of info in a sec. But let's make sure I say hi to everyone first. Rhiannon, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Hope you're having a good day. Stream was great. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing great. We're getting all in the dialogue mood today. Putting a scene together. And this is what we've done so far. Load, load of boxes, load of boxes here. And Kayo, thank you for the follow as well. RPG nerds, best nerds we are. Best genre. I mean, every, it's subjective. You're allowed, you're allowed to like other game genres, but RPGs have a close to my heart. Look, my heart's there, not there. <laughs> I'm silly. Um, entering lurk mode. Thank you for hanging out at Cora Studios. I appreciate you. And I enjoy your lurk as well. And thank you for joining our Discord. So, guys, um, those of you that have come in from Willow's awesome community, um, I'm going to make sure you know what we're doing here. So, these are the commands that matter. Just these two here. My YouTube, which I'm trying to post stuff regularly on there now i'm getting more serious about that that's going to be our source of info and and all that fun stuff for our game and um all the streams get uploaded on there too and also our website if you want a little bit more detail on how what the project actually is and you want to see some some stuff some images and, and character sheets and all that kind of thing and uh, I'm probably going to be doing another update to that website soon with an FAQ page on and a credits page at some point in the spring. So feel free to have a peep at those. I super appreciate it. And let's also, of course, give a shout out to Willow Scale. She was playing Elder Scrolls Online. I know before I even saw that because I know all. And is that how? I hope that's going super well. I hope you're having lots of fun with that game. It must be really addictive. <laughs> and Stacey, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Okay, guys, so thank you for being here. We are going to just nerd out now. I'm going to completely ramble on about dialogue and all these characters that you've never seen before. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, which I'm sure you'll have if you're here for the first time, because this is all new, then feel free to ask me and I'll be happy to answer because, like I said earlier, I'm building an FAQ page and I need all the questions. Um, all the the questions people want to ask because it'll, it'll help a bunch having an FAQ page. That's for sure, so feel free to, to ask anything at all. Um, right, so this is where we are. We've got these cute fruit guys for in this scene. And to sum it up, I'll be as short and sweet as possible here. These fruits that we're talking to are the baddies. They're the first boss of the game. And we even made a scale of evil for them, which is right here. They're, they're each on the scale of evil. Tomatoes, the most evil, then blueberry, then plum, then lemon, then apple. We've given them all a trope as well because oh, it was that geeky. And um, and then, yeah, we just made some little notes about them. So much, so much nonsense on here. <laughs> and there we just went into the dialogue and scene making, which is what we're doing now. And once we've done all this, we're on the second part of the conversation now so we're getting there once we've finished all this and we're happy with this and what all the dialogue is um because we use this all just for planning um we jump into the engine which is rpg maker um and we build the scene 
we do a lot of test plies of the seat and make it all pretty and exciting and and now that, that's the fun bit but this is a fun bit as well but in a different way in a more chilled and laid back way goodbye hi hash how are you doing welcome to stream thanks for being here and coming along with the ride um okay so so we got three routes here because in our game it's kind of choice based your hero's a blank slate and you make him what you want him to be or her because it's a custom hero and um you can shape their morals so in this particular part of the conversation there's going to be a split here you get a choice and um it's going to branch it's going to branch a bit and we've got a little bit of notes on what's going to happen in each of those branches so we're make, we're building those up now okay so this is the one we haven't filled in yet i'm kind of doing each of them at a time um rather than one at once because I, I wouldn't want to do one branch at once and then be like damn i don't know what to put in the other two so so i don't get screwed over i prefer to like do them all each at a time but it's all everybody's different everybody does it their own way um Okay, so for path three, I don't actually have. I don't actually have any dialogue ideas for that one just yet, but we do have some notes, which is the fruits lie and explain they want to paint a world. Well, okay, so basically, in this option, you get it's the most confrontational choice if you go for this one. It's the most brave and the most confrontational and they they're immediately going to get defensive and be like oh we're we're fine we're, we're not doing anything wrong and they make up a complete lie and say what they're doing but it's a big big lie and uh, eventually the party will see through it that it's a big lie and a battle will begin um, a battle will begin with all of them but it'll be all will the way we get there will be different um so if any of them are going to get all hesitant, which fruit would that be? Got to get into role play and improv sometimes. It can be a challenge. Um, it will be probably plum. It's not going to be apple because apple wouldn't lie. Well, he might. I think I'm painting apple into this like real honourable soul but Apple does have his faults even though he's the best so I've got to be careful um Stacey thank you for the follow I appreciate that okay I really want Blueberry to say we're really grateful because that pud is just too good to resist um I'm just thinking of a place to put it because we we had all these dialogue ideas with some with puns in and they didn't have like a context to them they were just amusing so it's it can be it can be a challenge to find a place for them but i think we've done a good job um Okay, so I don't think Blueberry needs to respond to Plum there. He's too oblivious to respond. So let's get straight to it, see if we can get the event here for Brinkin and the most important component. Well, I think because in the wisdom route here, they thank the hero. Um, that in itself, that we're really grateful, would fit great because they're really grateful that they brought Rose to them. They're thank they're thankful. So it feels like an opportunity to to slip slot that in somewhere. But it has to be lemon. 
that says something before blue blueberry because the way we've got it is that blueberry always talks after lemon because blueberry and lemon have a close relationship um we've got a note here that we made where relationships they have with each other which we didn't really get too detailed with we only have two tight different relationships here but one that we did have was that blueberry and lemon are best of friends well like father and son so we're kind of trying to show that in a subtle way without forcing it down the audience's throats and being like look at these two there we kind i kind of want to do it in a subtle way so what i've decided is that every time lemon speaks blueberry says something too um so that's what we're gonna do so lemon could speak again and say lemons can get peeled can't they i'm gonna google that i know apples can Not only is it safe to eat lemon peels, oh right, okay, you can then. You can actually eat lemon peel, I've never done that before. Okay, so... Let's think what he's going to say. Let's get into Lemon's head and think. Ah, well, if it isn't the most sweetest roses raindrop in the land. Yeah, I had a very generous raid from a lovely human like Mark. We have got a lot in there today. So, how are you doing, leg like Mark? I hope you're doing well. How is your Monday treating you, leg like Mark? Hope the weekend was relaxing. Um, Right. So this is always the bit where I go into super concentration mode when I'm thinking of what a character's going to say. So, um... Uh, well, he says he had a bad feeling about that one, but only Carol. Which means he might... That means Lemon might not have a bad feeling about us he only has bad feeling about carol so um it could work for him to say something like well lemon could always go oh, let, let's not talk about that about the peeling considering he's mentioned peeling with lemons he could be a bit like uh yeah let's not talk about me getting peeled right now but then he could just quickly be like uh yeah thank you um for bringing us rose because that's what we've said here we're just here to give rose to you um let's think i'm hyped for the super concentration face you're hyped for me going who knows my catchphrase that is your favorite thing that i do leg mark and i'm like who knows that is what it is, isn't it? Who knows? I always say it, because yeah, who knows? This story is improvised. The hamster on the spinning wheel in your mind is running on overdrive right now. Yup. <laughs> I wish I had a, a, a hamster in, in my mind. No, actually I don't, that would be quite scary actually. I don't think I'd want a living animal in my mind. I'm thinking of that liter literally, and it's kind of free, okay. <laughs> have you found out my hidden agenda who knows yeah who knows i feel like that's something you can say for almost anything so it, <laughs> it's very easy to keep saying it moon shadow tackles a twitty how are you doing moon so good to see you how is your weekend treating you moon moon are you gonna be playing final fantasy 7 remake is anybody else i assume moon will be because i know that moon shadows a final fantasy geek just like me and i'm intrigued to know if ch any more of chat are as well okay so this dialogue isn't gonna be 
great guys this lemon dialogue here because i'm just literally writing what comes to my head but i always say get it out get anything out and you can always make edits later it's better than a blank box so So you could, when I tend to put um, an enter, like that means that there's two, the character's gonna have two dialogue boxes. Cause sometimes you wanna split it up. You don't want too much dialogue. Sometimes you just wanna split the character's dialogue boxes. And I think this is a probably a good point to do that. So you'd be like, oh, let's not talk about that. And then when he changes the subject to something else, it's a brand new dialogue box. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, I want it, but honestly, I'm a bit reluctant now. Oh, why reluctant? Tell us all. I'm very interested too. Have you got? Are you are you worried that it's not going to live up to your expectations? Is that what I mean? Which is understandable if so. Final Fantasy VII's like my precious baby, so I am nervous as well. Don't fear, Rosie, the hamster is like kind of metaphorical abstract hamster, yes. And I'm very glad it is because I do not want a hamster in my brain. Imagine that. That's nightmare fuel. Probably not for Chub Cheeks though because he has a hamster obsession. We're even going to have a hamster in our game actually because of Chub Cheeks. He's, he's said that it's essential and it's going to happen and I couldn't refuse because... It sounds too cool. <laughs> um, the more that I don't feel motivated to pay the full price for a game that isn't really finished, I literally hate episodic releases. Oh no, Raindrop Chronicles is episodic though, Moon. Oh no. But yeah, I do get where you're coming from because sometimes you just want to play that full experience all in one go and when you think you've got to potentially wait years for the next bit it can be a little bit disheartening because i kind of get that because i was like i want to see kate sith i want to see my lovely kate sith i want to see all the you know cosmo canyon and all the fun stuff that happens after midgar and we might potentially be waiting years for that maybe but um i'm just like kind of accepting it as it is and being like okay so it is just me gar at the and that's how it is let's just see what that bit's like at least um but yeah it, i get that it can be a bit disheartening imagine that it's nightmare fuel i don't know i imagine it would be an improvement <laughs> if it was my man you want a hamster in your brain my goodness me, leg mark. Paying almost $70 times X amount of episodes. No game is ever worth that for me anyway. Yeah, I'm kind of trying to see it as Mass Effect. You know what the Mass Effect trilogy was like? It was like a story, like all one story, but split. The games were split into three games. So I'm kind of trying to see Final Fantasy VII Remake like that. Because they were full games. The Mass Effect games, they were, it wasn't all a game with one story because of the split with the three games. I'm rambling. But you know what I mean? They were full. There was a full game there. And I'm hoping it's the same with fun, this Final Fantasy Remake. It will go with that kind of similar. Because it worked really well for Mass Effect. Like, that's one of my favourite games. All three of them. So... You know, if it, if it's like that, then it could be could be okay. And you know, you had to pay full price for them. So, but it's not as it doesn't matter, I guess, when it's a full, actual full game. It would only be an issue if it was not. And you think actually, this is just you know an episodic game here, and it's not a full game. I could totally get the anger then. Um, uh, to be fair, I think if they did the whole of FF7 in one game with the production standards they're aiming for, it would take them 20 years to make. Would come on 50 Blu-ray discs, everyone would need. <laughs> so, yeah, and would cost... I mean, yes, I think there is a huge, huge scope with what they're going for here, it seems. But that doesn't mean that kind of game can't be made in one. I mean, look at The Witcher 3. When, when we think of games with big scope here, that was one game. 
the DLCs, the two DLCs, were like full games in themselves. Like you could get a good 40 hours out of each of those DLCs. Like that DLC, 40 hours each, that's insane. But The Witcher 3 did it. Um, and um, I mean, it took me 40 hours to do the DLCs because I did everything. I, you know, I did. I'm sure it took me a while. In fact, Blood and Wine probably took me longer than 40 hours because I explored the whole of Toussaint and did every single side quite as possible. Um, but yeah, it's that was a huge scope, literally massive, and that was one game. CD, CD Project Red pulled that off all right, and it made me. It, they become a favourite dev team because of that success. You know, like bringing geniuses, <laughs> just crazy. Um, so yeah, you can make a full game with a large scope, but at the same time, we don't know what they're planning with Final Fantasy VII. Maybe they're like re really going all out, even more than The Witcher Three did. Who knows? I said it again. <laughs> As I said it again, who knows? Yeah, we. I guess we have to wait and see before we judge. And then once we've played it, then we'll know. We might be like, holy crap, this really is something next level. But we don't know until we've seen it, do we? Yeah. Um, plus, we don't know how long it takes the next episode of Final Fantasy VII to come. With Nomura at the helm, we risk having to wait a long time. Yeah, Noon Shadow, I just want to like say I'm in full agreement there. One criticism I could give Square with this and... I'm, I'm, I think I'm generally quite positive about this remake. I haven't been one of the critical ones, but I do think they could communicate better with the fans. I think that's not been amazing. I would have liked them to have said what their plans were for the episodic games, like when they was thinking of the next part coming out. They could have like given us a year or an estimate because there's a lot of like there's a lot that hasn't been said and it kind of makes you a bit anxious because you're like well well when's it coming out how long are we gonna have to wait so those just a bit of communication would go a long way and i don't think fans would mind it as long as they had that communication um so hopefully they clear things up because it would be really nice to know when to expect part two or just a roundabout idea um that's for sure and um, hi sal how are you doing and ingal what program site is that? This is um, Draw.io, but it's been renamed to DrawDiagrams.net, I've just realised today. Um, and all it is, guys, it's kind of like a flow uh, program, and I use it for dialogue because we have branching paths in our game a lot in our dialogue, so it works great. Um, but the program we use for our game itself is RPG Maker MV, but this is Draw.io. Um, CDPR, now that's a proper studio that I'll always support no matter what, same moon, literally anything they make, I'm on there, throwing my money, because I just think they are, well, they've just proven themselves for sure. <laughs> I can imagine like in 70 years from now, Rose is still streaming on Raindrop Chronicles and we're all, must survive long enough to see the final episode of Final Fantasy. Imagine, imagine if I'm an old lady and it still hasn't come out. I really hope it doesn't become like that. I do, <laughs> just, I'm hoping that the game, the games will all get released in the next five years, but maybe that's a bit much to expect. We'll say, I'm, I'm going to wait until it's I've played it and then I'll give my honest uh, view. Um, oh dear, that would be like, <laughs> well, I'm not going to complain. If I'm 100, like if I someone told me that I'm going to live till 110 and I'll still be being a geek, making Raindrop Chronicles, I will realise I've had an amazing life. I'll be like, that is brilliant. That is what I want. I'll be very satisfied if that was what happened. <laughs> um, I really hope it doesn't become like that either, but like, who knows? Yeah, I hope that it becomes like that for me, though. I want to be 100 still making games. I mean, Raindrop Chronicles, I know I, I kind of label it as the never-ending game which is true to a certain extent because we're, it's it's usually that's my response when someone comes in stream and says so when's this game gonna be finished i'm always like guys 
this is why I do on Twitch. As soon as this is over, as soon as the game finished, I'm no longer streaming ever again. So it's a never ending game, guys. It's never going to end. This, as long as I'm on Twitch, this is always going to be going on. And that is ultimately why it's episodic as well, because I don't want you guys to wait 100 years for a game. <laughs> But if it's episodic, then, you know, you can potentially, like, be playing lots of episodes while we're working on this and doing it. So, episodic work brilliantly. In It depends on the game. Like, for Raindrop Chronicles, it's the perfect way to do our game. Um, but, like, some, some teams might jump on the episodic bandwagon when... It might actually suit being a full game more. Um, it all depends on the game. No longer streaming now. Now don't scare me like that. We need you to play until until dawn again at some point. Oh no. There is enough clips of me freaking out moon shadow. And screaming my head off. And getting really. Showing how much I get scared of those games. They're all still there. Those clips. I need to make it to 133. That means I see three different centuries. Might do. There was a man um, I saw in the news who's like 120. And he looks like insanely good for the, his age. He's 120. I mean, I'm a, I'm a bit off. He might be a bit younger than that. But it's close to 120. And he looks like, like a 60-year-old man. And he's like 100. He's like, whoa. That is impressive. Um, I know I was here when you played it. That's why I want to see you play it again. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the project I'm working on, Rose? I told you I need a hamster brain. My normal one can't remember who I have and haven't told about. Yes. I remember you putting it in our creative work channel and I followed you um, on Twitch because I thought, actually, this looks really, really impressive. So I threw you a follow leg mug. And feel free to tell us more about that and post info and updates on your game as well in that channel. You don't only ever have to post once. You can continue to keep posting, that's for sure. But yeah, talk about it in stream if you'd like to as well. Um, I tend to encourage people talking on the Discord so we don't get too off track. And especially so new peoples don't end up self-promoting. But obviously... If somebody's a trusted member of the community, then I'm not going to get offended if we chat about other people's projects. It's fun. It's always fun to see what other people are working on. Okay, so, um, where was I? Let's not talk about that. Um, right. Oh, no. Getting all the tabs up. At least I didn't reveal any secrets. The only issue I have with draw IO is how the text changes sometimes, the size and that. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, but that's like one of the only real issues. Like, look, it's just gotten small text all of a sudden. Maybe I'm do doing something wrong that's causing that. I don't know. Um, will do right now. Cannot stream working on it because it's got so hardcore crashes obs but yeah i'm working on making a 3d animated pilot episode passion project awesome so what is it it's crashing obs because it's it's taking up so much like ram or something and it's too much for your computer to handle if so that's dookie butts and i hope there's, there's a, there'll be a solution um right guys i'm trying to be a lemon now Trying to be a stoic, angry lemon boy. Well, I mean old man, because he's not a boy. Um, so what was the last thing he said? He said, I got a bad feeling about that one, but he, he'll probably be okay with the humans, or the hero at least. Because the only humans here are the hero and Rose. Um, Uh, 
Uh, we could literally be as simple as that. We don't have to get all wordy. Um, that could, or something like that could work. Um, why is it that, there we go. I was going to say, why is it all up there? Um, oh, a typo. Adding young kind of emphasises the fact that he's old, so I was kind of tempted to add that for that reason. Um, Because the main thing is we want to get back on track with the conversation. We don't want to get too off off track here. And the ultimate thing is that we that we have said we're here to give Rose to you. Um, and it's so easy to just end up not to going off the conversation. But this puts things back on track with what, what we're doing. Which is, yes, we've brought Rose to them. Um, and there's so many typos, dear, dear, there we go. And this is just the perfect opportunity for cute little Blueberry to say we're really grateful. What a cute pun to have there. Because he always talks after Lemon does and Lemon said thank you, so it feels like an appropriate thing to follow up with. By the way, Rose, how are you today? Not doing too bad, Lemon. Lemon, I caught you, Lemon. Moon, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, Moon. I called you a lemon. <laughs> this is when, you know, you're getting too engrossed in a bloody story about fruits. Takes over your life. I'm calling you all fruits. <laughs> lemon isn't exactly a nice nickname to give someone either doesn't lemon mean what is what does it mean to call someone a lemon you lemon i've heard that said before but it's meant to be bad like it's not like <laughs> nice what does lemon mean in slang a defective individual my goodness gosh well, I apologise, Deepy Moon Shadow. How dare I? <laughs> April 6, 2020 is the day 20 called me 11. I'll never forgive myself. Ever. <laughs> but to be fair, Lemon is one of the nicer ones in this little gang. He, on the scale of evil, he's not that high up, so... You know, it could have been worse. I could have called you a tomato. Which is, is not who you want to be at all. Okay, so ultimately the wisdom route, they thank the hero for bringing them the most important component they need for their masterpiece. Okay, guys, so what I am going to do is um, bold the bits that we've done and what, what we've covered. It'll just keep things a bit organised. So... Um, so we haven't like mentioned a being the master part of the masterpiece yet, so I'm not going to actually bold the second part of that sentence. But they have thanked the hero, so we've done that bit. Um, the compassion route we have. So we've kind of started to build a bit of trust because of what Apple said. Um, but we need to do it more. And the bravery route we haven't even started, so we should make a start on that. But I think once we've like, I think the start's the hardest. 
it'll be a lot easier just writing all, all this stuff afterwards so we got the hard the hard bits done and over with Nene. um it's lovely to see you so dedicated and into this project yeah i'm, I'm just a big geek i mean i get so into stuff like creating stuff and i love it because it feels less really like you're doing something and giving something to the world in a weird way um you know and it's just exciting to see something develop over time and see how it, how far you've come yay but i'm gonna spam it again guys um my youtube so sub sub guys give give a comment on a video or like or you know because those things help and um anybody at all nobody's forced but it helps it goes a long way and i appreciate it so i kind of am promoting my youtube a bit more now because i'm gonna be taking it more seriously and putting more stuff up on there um so so there so now i'm gonna consider the bravery but holy crap guys it's 6 p.m i didn't even know the time I'm meant to go when I don't want to because I was in the middle of writing this uh this dialogue time just goes by too fast uh, okay so What I am going to do then, guys, because I will have to shortly end things, I'm going to put the grave command in chat, though, because we will pass the love to somebody today. Um, so feel free to use that raid command or say hello to the streamer we'll be going to say hi to. But before I finish up, I'll just let you know that I'll probably do a bit of this off stream today. Um, and I'd say that tomorrow we'll be putting a... We'll be putting a close to this scene the dialogue and we'll likely jump into rpg maker and build the scene once we've done that um we'll see how it goes um i'm excited and other than that was that any i swear there was something else important i needed to say i think it was to do with this scene discussion but i'm gonna have to edit this um I'll probably edit that off stream because it's going to take a bit of wording but all i'm going to say is that the video has not been posted yet because i've been doing focusing on other stuff to do with the game but it will be but i'll give you guys some clear warning when and i'll be letting you know when the video is up so no worries at all folks um so guys we will see who is online i'm actually going to look on my phone because <laughs> That means that it's just easier so i have to make sure it's nobody's going offline now because i have a habit of doing that sometimes i go with red and then the person's gone offline um Okay, so Animal Crossing stream, that's always a chill one, haven't played that game, but I know a lot of you like it, I'm assuming a lot of you like it anyway, because it's ridiculously popular right now, let's just, let me say that, so I'm going to pass you over to a streamer who's playing that, who I think is super nice, super friendly, who if you don't know them, then you should get acquainted with them, because they're a really, like, no, like you feel really good in this person's streams. They're super friendly. Um, Ella. Um, so we will we'll go over and say hi to her. Never heard of Animal Crossing. Thanks for a stream. Well, Rex, who, who's hacked Rex? <laughs> Someone clearly has. Thanks for a stream. Yay. Okay, guys, I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out with me today and for the awesome chats. Take care. I will see you tomorrow. Bye bye.